so I, yeah, I actually attended the live event yes. because I was, because I, because I'm a really boring bastard. Uh, so on a Saturday evening and my wife's like, what, what do you mean you can't have dinner yet? Um, so I attended it, but I was also at the time working on something, nothing related to what we do as a profession, actually a side, another side project. So I'm designing something anyway, it's very nerdy. doesn't fucking matter. So I sat there doing that and I put big Al on, on the tablet to the side. Um, and it was a masterclass in webinars on triggering, tweaking, pulling on every single psychological cue, the FOMO, the promise, the stick to the end because I'm not going to let you down. And sorry, Alex, I know you're never going to watch this, but I think the, the thing that he gave after that for sticking around was a bit limp. Essentially, it was all his draft stuff. Um, but for me, it was Russell Brunson on steroids. And I, I, my perception of Alex Hormozzi is he just wants to be the guru it, from an ego. I mean, I hope I'm you know, not talking out of term. Uh, and this is no like judgment on him. It's just what I see as a bystander. I mean, I'm not worth 100 million quid, so, but we're allowed to talk because he's putting himself out there. Yeah. Uh, but I think this is driven by a massive ego, which, you know, fair enough. You've got, you know, we've all got an ego of certain sizes. Some of ours are 12 inches, some people's are three inches, whatever. Um, and, and I think that's it. So this massive ego, and he wants to be the best at this. He wants to be the best marketer, the best bra personal brand, the best sales guy, the, be the guy that did the biggest webinar, the guy that d had the most live people on Zoom, the guy that, the guy that, the guy that, I believe yeah. that's it, because it's a self-fulfilling prophecy then. It just adds a, a massive amount of mass and momentum to his own brand if he keeps doing that. Because for every detractor and hater, there'll be, there's going to be someone to balance that. And if he keeps doing it long enough, there'll be two people to balance that versus one. And so it's, yeah. Um, the giveaway, the... <sighs> So, right, here's the sad thing. So I looked at the, um, sorry, I, so I joined Zoom, and it, you get, you're get you in a slice, a server slice, because obviously you don't have 100,000 people. If there were yeah. that many people live, this is the other thing. You get on a server slice, there's like four or 500 people on a session. So to me, it looks like there's 600 people there live, but there's another 20, 50, whatever servers or sessions with these people on. Yeah. Um, and the one thing I will say is that he attracts a very specific type of person. No business, broke. Like the comments were, I'm in school, or uh, I lost my job, or... And, and look, this is not to piss on people. Everyone starts somewhere. But uh, like these comments were just desperation. I need this. I want this. Take my money. Uh, I've, got all the, I've got $300 in my bank account. You can have it all. Like like desperate fucking desperate um and then he did the the big value stack and i knew straight away this is free yeah there's no way he's going to put a value on this i'm sorry he put his his value on the value stack but there's no way he's going to charge for it absolutely no fucking way because then Excellent. he would prove he would prove all the disprovers wrong um, and people are like, oh my God, I, I pay five grand for this, this, that, and the other. And I'm just sat there going, come on, you fucking idiots. It's going to be free. That's yeah. the whole point of the brand. If you haven't worked this out now and you're a bloody fan, there's no hope for you. And my issue with what he delivered is it doesn't tell you operations. It just tells you how to get the lead. And then most people fuck it up after that yeah. point. So he gives all this massive value and it's great. And it is. Your positioning, the offer, lead magnet, starting from scratch, starting from somewhere, but that's not running a business. Yeah. So I'm Michael <laughs> Nadlin from Market Lead. In today's video, we've got Ed Lake giving his real opinion <laughs> on how he thought about the Alex Hamosi $100 million leads <laughs> launch. Now, in this video today that you've already seen, I have a different opinion of it, but it's actually good to actually see someone like you, Ed, actually speak about your own real opinion about it? Because you've been in the industry for a long time. Like Look, you've been doing this for over context, 10 years. 
yeah, for context, who pe- people don't know me, um, I've made a, a few quid. Uh, more than seven figures, less than eight. So I'm I'm uh, rich, but I'm certainly not mega. I'm certainly not a guru, uh, and I've been in business for thirteen years. But I, but that I was in business as a kid. I was selling computers out of my dad's garage and shite like that. So I've always done little bits and pieces. So I've done all right. But the thing I've got to acknowledge about you, mate, is. I've said this before and I'll say it again. About six years ago, I got into your content and it was easily the most advanced but practical Google Ads and analytics uh, trainings I've ever been through. So the challenge with like these internet marketers or people who do business content is they're creating content for the masses because that most people are at the beginning of their journey. You're obviously at the tip of the spear for like very advanced people like Forge is a lot of money to join and a lot of money to stay in. But it's not if you're running a business. Now, what I liked about the $100 million launch was his first book was on offers. So it's actually about getting something that people actually want. The next thing is actually generating leads. So it's not a full system. Now, I bought the audio book. I didn't even like, I didn't even watch the whole thing to the end. I just went on Audible and actually bought it myself. Little did I know you can actually get it for free on his podcast and uh, all those value stacks. And what I started going through those training videos about like paid ads and a lot of the concepts he was talking about were actually very accurate, but they're concepts. They're not practical applications. And as you and I know, you run accounts, you've been running accounts for years, spending millions of pounds. I run spend over a million dollars us and Aussie a month. There's a big difference between the theory and then the application. And the challenge some people get with these types of information, this business training is when they do that, they think they're getting the million dollar a month insights, but you only get that by running it yourself. I've seen it with previous CEOs, people I've worked with who just do not run ads or do not generate leads is they're talking about theory and then someone actually has to execute it. And the execution is very different from how the concept or the strategy is. So that's where my big gap is that a lot of people are going to go into this believing that they're going to be ads experts or paid experts or lead generation experts without five, 10 years behind them. Now, this content's made and said, like, learn from all my mistakes, but you only learn from doing the application, the learning from the mistakes you own make, and then the results you actually earn for yourself. So that's my thoughts on that so far. Yeah. And the, the other problem, um, does he teach this? Does he not teach this? I'll be honest with you. I haven't looked at the, at the lessons to know if he does, but there's a lot of fake it till you make it out there. And the problem with um, 90% of this, when you go after a lead, you are essentially asking for money or the business's time or resources or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it might be ad spend, even if you're working for free. Um, and this run before you can walk, fake it until you can make it, it's on someone else's dime. It's their risk. So if you're not upfront about your expertise and experience, if you go in with a, a, a hormosy offer stacked up to the to the T's and someone's like, whoa, you're going to do this, 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 and it's guaranteed. And it, like the business owner is going to be like, oh, that's an offer I can't say no to. Is that what he says? Or be stupid saying no to. Yeah, but what's the underlying expertise behind the offer? Because the offer is one thing. The work is something entirely different. Yeah, and definitely. the thing that pisses me off is people rocking up straight out of bed, straight out of school, going, all right, I'm a business person now. Uh, I'm going to whack this lead gen campaign together. I'm going to spam the shit out of people. going to give them this crazy offer. going to get the leads in. going to close them. Okay, where's the fucking work? Yeah. Who's doing that? Who's screwing that up? Who's burning that money? It's not your risk. It's not your money. It's the business owner. And yeah. I get it. And their every- time and the opportunity cost. That's the big thing I see with most businesses. It's not the cost of management or the ad spend. It's the opportunity cost. If that dollar has been misallocated to the wrong click to the wrong person, it's, yeah, you've wasted $10 on a click, but you might have wasted $100 or $1,000 in actual revenue generated for that business through a qualified lead. It, it does. Counts. I, I took on a, uh, I tried to hire an affiliate marketer early in the year and um, it's been false start after false start and the time and energy uh, and resources, it's just, yes, it's cost thousands because I had to pay for the platform, but the lost time to me as a business is worth way more. Yeah. Um, 
and I've had a, literally had a guy back and forth on email with me saying, why are you not taking my offer? I'm guaranteeing it. And I'm saying, no, 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 no. <laughs> You're guaranteeing that you won't charge me if you fuck up. There's a difference there. Yeah. That's the guarantee. You're guaranteeing me the sales, the leads, or whatever, but you can't guarantee that. Therefore, what you're guaranteeing is you won't charge me a 1,500 quid a month if it goes wrong. Well, fucking hell. It's worth a lot more than that to me if this goes wrong. So and a lot of people don't understand that, and they can't get their head around that. And it's just yeah. like, like, I don't want to stamp all over entre entrepreneurialism because – it's exactly what I was doing as a kid. I was building computers and selling them to people yeah. at, on, in the local newspaper. And they turned up and went, who the hell, is, who's, who's this child who, who I'm yeah. giving money to? So, yeah, but we just have to be honest about who we are and at what stage we are. And uh, if anyone's watching this and they love Alex Hormozzi, fair play. Uh, stay off the gear, though. It's not good for you. But do use what he shows because it's valuable. But just yeah. when you're pitching to people... Be honest about why it's free and why you're guaranteeing yeah. this. If you've got six months experience, just tell them, you know, build up a, go after a specific type of business that you want to work with and build up a case study or two. And just like, because there are smaller businesses in particular out there that are willing to take a chance on you because they are tied up on cash. And they're like, you know what? We'll give you a chance if it's low cost or yeah. if you don't charge us if it doesn't work but there's a lot of people that would not they'd run a mile if you told them that so you've got to understand that balance yes. it's a stepping stone like i remember when i was years ago getting clients it was like 300 dollars a month then 750 then 1500 then two and a half and then now five thousand then there's more now it's like i don't go from zero to five plus thousand dollars a month per client just from going Here's a free offer. It's expertise. It's relationships. It's earning the trust. It's actually having a portfolio or case studies to actually prove that I can work with this. And I know you know this because I'll say it as well. It's like game sees game. So like a real business owner mm. sees through that very fast. Like I am to say, I get people hitting me up all the time. I'll work for you for free. I'll do this lead gen for free. All this. I'm like, free is the biggest risk for me because I'm like, free is worth nothing. People value nothing more less sorry than free information and free services they disrespect it and if you actually value yourself you should actually be charging your value like there's multiple ways to go about now i'm in a very different position i run a company so do you ed and then obviously we get referrals and we've got our own ways but there's different ways to go about it than that and as you mentioned earlier today when we we're chatting is the the risk from this is not the individual, but the mass of people doing this now. Like I'm already getting the mass of people over the last few months, spam emailing me, getting my email address, doing it on LinkedIn, doing it everywhere. And that's just now, like what next wave is this creating? Because this is a new wave of entrepreneur, a new wave of like five years ago, 10 years ago, it was Gary V. And then years before that was all these internet marketers and years before that. So it's just going to create a new wave of people where the big risk people face is not that the content isn't right. It's that they don't have the right skills to implement it properly and they waste time because you make money from skills and implementing those skills and then marketing those skills. But so many people are just doing the selling without the skills. So it's like, I'm going to sell you a sandwich, but inside the sandwich, there's nothing. It's like you want to actually make sure there's something there that when you are providing it, they do get their return. They do get like, so like the opportunity cost is the biggest risk most businesses do not see. They think it's like, oh, I'll save a bit of money here. Or it's like, if that's your approach, you're going to lose money. You're a loser it, of a business. It's the bottom 20% of businesses that yeah. act like that. They're, the ones that take that chance as well are probably not the best clients because they haven't got money in, in yeah. the first place. And again, yeah. it sounds like cynical, arrogant. It's not intended to be that way. Uh, the, these... A lot of this stuff is Salt Bay and his golden steak. It's two and a half thousand dollars for a, a steak with gold on it. You can buy the same steak I, for 50, 50 quid somewhere else. It hasn't got the gold shit yeah. on it. The gold shit is the is the the false offer, the stacked up. You'd be an idiot to not take this. It's Salt Bay's <laughs> golden steak, isn't it? It doesn't taste yeah. any better. I I want to change the tone of this because it's an interesting approach. I still think. His content is extremely good, but it's it works on levels. Like you've got to have the experience to actually make it click. Like 
it's there's a big difference between someone saying to someone who's like super depressed like just meditate or help you versus someone who's been meditating for 10 years same action same implication but like a very different outcome and the challenge is without a base skill or a base actual value not offer but base value that you're actually giving that's where it misaligns so when i go through the material it's not that i haven't heard it before i hear it more clearly i hear it more simply i hear it's more palatable and I think that's what most people want is most people want to run their own business. Everyone's ambitious. Most people I know want to run their own business. And rather than just doing the work, they're always just like, what's the next sure, course? Course. what's the next book? What's the next video? And his is so palatable that it's really encourages people and it does educate. And that's amazing. I think that's outstanding. But the underlying issue is if people are making offers and getting leads for something that they cannot do and are not going to be able to deliver, I think that's a bit unethical. Because if you're selling shit that you can't do, or if you're selling it at all. But the big issue, it was years ago when there was this thing where people would do, um, they sell Facebook, like SMMA, like the uh, Ty Lopez course. I never went through it, but I knew mates who had no business experience who bought that course and were just trying to sell people $2,000 a month US uh, Facebook management. And then they'd get someone on Upwork to do it for 500 bucks and they'd just clip the profit. Now, that's business arbitrage. That's normal. But it's like, but if you have no experience running the account yourself, knowing strategy, all you're doing is trying to clip off suckers off the market. And then sooner or later, all these people, their businesses fail. None of them succeeded, by the way. It wasn't like I'm bitter because like they arbitrage the market. Now they're multimillionaires. I was a, None of I, them are in that. They come I, and go. They cycle through. It's influencer marketing. It's affiliate marketing, SEO, like all this rubbish that comes and goes and then this will be the next phase, I believe, lead generation. In in our game, so digital agencies, so we're PPC agency, retention is the, the king, uh, cl- yeah. client retention. And these, all this training and all these people pushing these, I remember these SMA or whatever, social media marketing gurus, because they, they cropped yeah. up during COVID. Yeah. And they're teaching you how, how to run a... Essentially, an agency is just flipping clients every two, three months because you can't retain them because you've got no prior experience, which you've just said. Um, and retention is, that's just killer. That's depressing. It's, de- it's horrible for the client. It's horrible for you running the agency. It's, ho- it's horrible for anyone you hire. It's just depressing, awful, doesn't have any longevity in it. Will it make you money in the short t- term? Maybe, but, you know, friggin' hell. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with getting a job and getting some experience for a year. Nothing wrong with I that did agency for six years. I worked in an agency for six years and I still had clients half of the time. Like I knew that the this, value this, and then now this, speed, were... this fucking speed dating business that the past three or four years has tried the internet and YouTube and blah 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 has generated this friggin' uh fast lane business, overnight fucking business, pop it up. It's just yeah. terrible. And it reduces, I mean, what it does do though, it reduces barrier to entry, but it pushes the, you call it the tip of the spear, a very phallic metaphor. Um, but it does push that tip, that shaft gets even longer and that tip gets yeah. even better, bigger because. Longer that, and harder, mate. There you go. Uh, <laughs> sorry, mother, if you're listening to this. Um, just kidding. My mum never listens to anything I say. Um, but the, yeah, so it pushes the cream of the crop, doesn't it? That's a completely different metaphor, nothing to do with a spear at all. But I think you then get a bigger divide. And AI might sandwich that in the future, but if you're adding a load yeah. of shit at the bottom, it's just it's just pushing the, the cream higher and higher, which is a good thing for people with experience and value. Yeah. Um, Look, you've got to be, like, as they say, like so good they can't ignore you. Like, Just be good at your work. Like When you talk about the retention before, you recommended on a podcast about a year and a half ago and i bought this book straight away it's probably the most important book i've ever read never lose a customer again by joey coleman i bet you're going to get it out mine's in my cupboard let me just get it out there you go there she is (laughs) there we go mate that book is outstanding anyone watching this get that my agency my company's values are built off two things or three actually which equal the outcome relationships plus results and that's it that's all i want amazing relationships amazing results because that will equal uh retention it's like a basic equation but so many people are just i don't even know what they're doing because i pick up these accounts 
all the time. I've worked at the agencies that do the stuff and then I know what happens behind the scenes. Like behind the curtain of all these glitz and glamour of marketing is the reality. I've worked for info marketers before. I've run many of their campaigns, like multiple people's campaigns. I see what happens behind the scenes. I see what they're like as people as well. And Mm. so do you, Ed, as well. And look, the interesting thing that I was going to mention before we just started recording, I said, do you know where that was recorded? Their webinar. Because I do. To hold that thought, the door's just knocked. That was a perfect point to pause and we can continue. Sorry, hold on. Postman. I'm going to actually leave this in for dramatic effect. So anyone seeing this, you're going to love this. Bloody hell. He could have fit that through the letterbox. Oh, had to run, run to the... Sorry. The smallest little package, the postman could have put it in the letterbox. So, um, yeah, where was the that? The question recorded? was, do you, do you know where it was recorded? Uh, Grant Cardone's backyard. <laughs> no. Where it was recorded, and you can tell by the screens behind, it was in Tony Robbins' studio that he runs his seminars in, in Florida, which the CEO of Tony Robbins' companies now are your best mate, Dean Graziosi, who is friends with Alex Hamosi. So there's a uh, trickle back to the the Dean who you love. It's just, but they're, they're just, uh, Dean's, oh, he just, he, they're just, I can't stand pushy gurus se- selling dreams. And he's, for me, it, we wouldn't get on. I mean, if we were, turned up, yeah. rocked up at a bar, um, He'd be like, oh, who are you? And I'd be like, well, I, don't, I know who you are. And uh, but that's why he flies in a jet and you fly in a car. <laughs> Business class, if I'm lucky. Um, <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, well, Look, this let's is, wrap this up okay, this segment. So this, is, this, is an, no, this is an important point. Yeah. This is a very important point, actually. Do you want to fly in a private jet uh, instead of business or first class like poor old me? I don't really do a lot of flying anyway. I think you you either have, you want to be that type of person or you don't. Most people are not Alex Hormozy, Brunson, Robbins, Gaffney, Dean Gaffney, whatever his bloody name is. Um, oh no, he was TV personality in the Crazy Ozzy, mate. Crazy. That's don't act. One. Don't act foolish. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you, you've got to be, you've got to want to do that. Do you want to put videos out three times a day like Hormozy? Like literally following yourself around with the camera. You can't take a shit without having to film yourself thinking about something and this constant barrage of social media. You've got, and yeah. you've got to be doing these live events. You've got to be doing this. You've got to be recording. You've got to, that's a life. It's not a lifestyle, in my opinion. That's a type of life. And if you want that, you yeah. will make the money. Because if you're relentless, you will make the money. Um, if you prepare... At the same time, mate, I know you've mentioned to me how much you've made and I've shared with you how much I've made and we don't but, put ourselves out there that much. But it's not 50 million or 100 million. Oh, you but don't you know can, about me, mate. <laughs> chill out. Uh, <laughs> but you can, you can you can do it quietly like me. And yourself, yeah. small channel, a uh, little bit of social media stuff, and still make more money than ninety nine point five percent of people. Like I can't even. <sighs> I don't spend my money; I invest it and stuff. So I'm pretty bland. Yeah. But sometimes when I see what I can make in a, a weekend doing a sale, and I think what the average person makes, I do think, why do I need more? Um, I'm all, I'm already incredibly lucky for, it's not look fortunate. Um, and I'm not that greedy. Like yeah. how many millions do you need? Why do you need 20 million? Why it's do you because need you, because you understand value. You know how to give value, tangible value that impacts your client's lives and your life. And value that's why life. like, it's, it's like, it's a ongoing, like, repeat cycle is you've been doing this for so long i know your stuff works even just through the education but also your clients work so you understand giving value and receiving value so and i'm the same by the way like i 
look, you just said before, like what you make in a weekend. Like I was out with someone the other day that I know I make more than a month than he makes in a year. And that's wild to think when like a few years ago, you were both on the same path, but it's like, I didn't stop. I didn't become a guru. I just put out a few videos after, uh, Google advertising, Facebook advertising and landing pages to enterprise clients and medium to small size businesses around the world, get them the results they want. They make money. So they're happy to pay me simple equation. I help them make money. Then they pay me. And you get that. I get that. So that's why there's a big disconnect when we see this material where it's like, you have no value. You can't give any value, but here's an offer. Here's how you generate leads and just try to plug that funnel with like, You've got no water coming through. You've got the funnel set up, but there's no water coming through. Now, I think that's where the disconnect is for a lot of people now. And that's why the market will flood with a lot of people who will burn businesses and burn clients for free, but they're not burning them for free. It's the ad spend. It's the time. It's the opportunity cost. Ultimately, at the end of the day, if you're doing work and you're offshoring it rather than just doing it yourself or in your business to start off with, that's a huge red flag. You should be doing it yourself or with someone you know personally or someone in your business, not offshoring it cheap on Upwork or overseas because you need quality control, especially when you're starting up. And I just don't think there's any probably ethical or better ways to do it than that because you'll see the results, you'll actually get the results, you'll own the results, and you'll feel that you're actually delivering the value rather than just arbitraging the market, taking value, making it someone else's problem, then they're holding the bag. Yeah. I completely agree because for every one person that works for, there's an absolute graveyard of thousands of businesses where that process has failed. Yeah. Um, and you say the, the he say so what are we still talking about? Uh, Al, big Al. Yeah. How about I wind uh, off this section? Well, I'm just going to say one we can thing. Do another one. Okay. Be- because you just said uh, th- we've just made the cardinal sin of talking about cutting in the middle of a video that people are watching, but who gives a fuck? I'm not a professional. Mate, this is raw. Video. We're just chatting, by the way. We're real. We're real. Don't be fake, man. Uh, everything's real. Um, the Until it's not. And So you said give value, give value, then you take. Um, you receive, not take. Yeah, Sorry. Receive. So Big Al's kind of screwed that for us as an industry because he's given, 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 and he's not taking anything apart from his, he's not even 80 20 it. He's taking one, he's taking the 1% of the 1% of his audience. It's probably smaller than that for acquisition.com. So I get why he's doing it. But in the process, he's given all this away for free and expecting nothing in return. Um, but he does, obviously, but it's of a very small percentage of his audience. So but for people is, like Ed, me, I'm going to interrupt. It's attention. It is attention. And that's the most, that's the most valuable. How do I sell my trading course for my agency people? Because they could go yeah. to, and quite rightly, they go to Alex for the lead gen shit. But then you say, oh, okay, well, the operational shit, that comes from my side. Yeah. So then get half of it for free, I guess. And that's when you can buy God tier ads by Ed Leak. And I can personally say I'm a paying customer and I've enjoyed it. I'm also part of the Forge Mastermind as well, which is uh, application and membership. I'm not pitching it. I'm just giving my affiliate code. No, no. But like it is valuable, by the way. My business has grown by 150% the last six months from being in it. I'll end the pitch there. Yeah, and I guess the difference is that for for what I so the private group that I run that Mike was part of, and I'm glad he's there, is for PPC agencies specifically. So everything is very honed and specific. So whereas Alex is hitting everyone with it, yeah. uh, with his content, um, just to rephrase that, which is fair enough. But then when you apply it to specific industries, it start industries, not injuries. It starts. It's less tangible. Uh, and you've got to then understand the next steps. You've got to understand, like, if you're doing Google Ads, how you on, how you properly onboard, what that process looks like, yeah. what the ongoing work looks like. How do you hire these people properly? All the operational stuff, the reporting stuff, the bits that he can't teach because he can't teach a thousand industries that. And the margin of error for running ads is so high and unforgiving that. Like for me, I've been doing this for just under 10 years. You've been doing it longer and running your own business in that time. And I'm still refining the processes to remove because like one wrong thing, like I was on an account today with a uh, home loan company spending over $100,000 a month and there were just 
one ad group was in the wrong campaign that had spent uh, $40,000 where the actual proper keys were spent $400. And one wrong mistake is a $40,000 difference. And I'm not running that, by the way. I'm consulting on it. And But those mistakes, and they're just like you improve over time, is these things, if you don't catch them, and if you're just like the media buyer, because that's what he's promoting is a lot of paid ads. He said most of his money he's made is through paid advertising, which will tell people, hey, maybe I should do paid advertising. But he not doesn't promote running that. a paid ad business, which is very yeah, different. He doesn't service. People will start doing it because that's they don't have a business, so they'll do the business that delivers other businesses. And just because he can do it doesn't mean that he can teach other people to do it. I know full well that people who buy my products if they don't apply it for a start it won't do it but i it, there are there are levels of acumen and everyone's different and sometimes it's a lot easier to teach someone else than someone you Mate, know on the, i was just about to say it is easier to teach than do now you're an exception and i, I, I know both. you definitely <laughs> i know you definitely haven't done what i'm just about to say but uh i have in the past have been to uh life improvement seminars, self-improvement, personal <laughs> development, as you call them. Now, I know you wouldn't go that low, but one thing I've noticed about these people is they go there to try and fix themselves. They don't fix themselves. They learn stuff and they want to fix other people because they're just like, well, it's easier to tell other people to do it than to do it myself. It will be the same here. People learn these concepts, become a consultant, and then rather than actually doing it on their own business, they'll do it for other people when they actually haven't had the real world like knowledge experience and things that will actually move the needle the thing is if you actually just do the work it is so easy but you've got to allocate years um one of my mates Corey lindholm if you're familiar with him amazing google ads consultant like outstanding probably in the top three in the world um you being one him being another and honestly i think myself uh, i was chatting to him oh no sorry i was watching one of his videos and he goes just he's got a new youtube channel so shout out to Corey, watch his channel is he was mentioning like you can't shortcut this stuff like get a job in an agency just do the work like you can't watch a course like you've got to spend millions of dollars you've got to spend tens of thousands of hours like i spent 10 years nearly in agencies working for someone else that's why it's been running a business is hard but that's why it's been more of a breeze because i've taken all that learning from the client side the business side and then my own experience to like jump ship really fast but most people won't do that. They'll get the pain. They'll get the burn. And ultimately, why would they? the long the way is the short way. Everyone wants a shortcut. The, thing, the shortcut yeah, but, is the longest journey. So a final stanza on this. Think about it. What if you're 20 years of age, you've never run a business, you've never had a proper job. Um, and you see someone like Alex Hormozy, who's gone from a young age, a very young age, to extremely wealthy, and he's throwing you all his breadcrumbs. Why would you want to be in a job for 10 years? So is that his fault? No. Is it just the climate that we're in? Uh, yes. Um, it's the social media compaction machine, isn't it? Everything gets condensed yeah. down into 30 seconds. Oh, there I am. I could be a guru tomorrow. So Alex's materials. Problem. Alex's materials is steroids. Doing the work is the gym. You can get there by just doing the gym, but if you do education on the side, you can build it. But most people are just taking steroids and never lifting the weights. If you go to a job... I think if I was 20 years old again, I had to go back. Actually, I feel like I went on the perfect journey, by the way. Got out of uni, worked in an agency, doing Google Ads. I did the perfect path. But it was like, like they jumped their path. Mine's just been linear the whole time. I would work a job where I specifically did a job that made people money. You get paid more money when you make other people money. So if it's Google Ads, Facebook Ads, selling, whatever it is. But if you just keep taking this content, you're just taking steroids and it will actually fuck up your brain because you'll start getting conflicting information and you won't have your own experience to go, what is my experience mixed in with this? And then start to actually have like critical thinking rather than just going, Grant Cardone says this, Alex Amosi says this, Michael Nadlin says this, Ed Leak says this, and like you get confused. Mental masturbation, paralysis by analysis, you need real experience. Mic drop. Yeah. I'll take that. Awesome. So, Ed, thanks for this segment. We'll jump into our next one. It will be a shorter one, mate. But thank you so much for your time um, and your feedback here. Uh, whilst at the start it was obviously quite uh, direct about our feelings, ultimately it came from a place of how do you just really deliver value? Not often, yeah, no, how do you uh, deliver value? 
there's, there's no um, hate. I think we were quite balanced there. Um, there was praise. So I hope people don't think we're being negative or jealous or anything like that. I think it was quite a balanced appraisal. And like I say, when you put yourself out there, like we are now, people are free to comment and put their opinions forwards just like we are. So if someone says, Ed, you look like a prick, it's like, that's fine. That's your opinion. I don't mind, honestly. Thanks, Dad. Um, so, yeah, I think that was quite... Uh, interesting hopefully rambled awesome thanks mate appreciate it